What is up guys? This is Archihax here and today we're going to be taking a look at creating a sun study. There's some bunch of cool stuff happening here. These are individual images that are rendered automatically. So you have to click on you once and produce all these images. And also these can be stacked quickly to make a brief overview of where the shadow falls or can be spread out to analyze how many daylight hours each area gets around your site. Alright, let's dive into it. So the way we're going to do this is by using Rhino and V-Ray. The version that I have is Rhino 5 and V-Ray 3.6. And you might need this to follow along or previous versions or newer versions should work just fine as well if you can find it. Right settings. All right. So first off, I'm going to be showing you the model. So this is a test massing I added to a site in New York and it's a tall tower and I figured shadow will affect the surrounding neighborhood a lot so shadow study will be very useful. The first thing we're going to do is by going to uh, set one day sun animation and we're going to choose the location of our project which is located in New York. So I'll say that, say OK. And then north angle, oh, this is something that we have to figure out. So let's go to the north view and then type in angle. Now what angle does is it calculates the angle between two lines and we draw the lines by creating two points. So first point, I'm going to create, set it down there and then put it vertically to our canvas and then take the second point and then put it parallel to the north that I'm thinking of using. Now this model is actually true north, but I'll just do that for demonstration purpose. So the angle I get is about 32.6. So I'll copy that, control C, and then go back to set one day sun animation, and then type that into here. Okay, now this is the part where you choose the, the duration and the spacing between the shadow study iterations. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to choose 2019 because that's this year. And I'll choose July for summer solstice, summer solstice. And then I'll say, let's start with 9 a.m. Finish at 6 p.m. And choose 60 minutes so that Shadow is calculated every hour. Now I'm totally fine with saving the file as JPEG, and then we'll leave the rest of the settings as it is. One thing I did in advance is I created this view and then saved it in the named view so that we can keep the study consistent. We'll type in this O for this V-Ray options. And then first we'll open up render tab and then I'll disable progressive for now. And then open up camera. That looks fine. And then for render output, I'll just keep it slow res for speedy iteration purpose. And then otherwise all the settings are pretty good. Make sure the global illumination is on and ambient occlusion on for nice soft shadow. And and most importantly, I need to enable shadow render element, which will allow us to separate the shadow from the rest of the rendering that we can use to color the shadow after. You'll see what I mean. We'll close out of it and then we'll type in record animation. So what this does is it takes the settings that we set at the one day animation settings and then batch them as multiple renderings and save individual files in a designated folder. Okay, so we'll choose a folder and desktop. Create a folder. Say new folder for now. I'm not prepared for this. And start rendering. 
Now, what you might realize as you start your first render is that it might look completely blown out. But don't worry about that. As long as we have a shadow pass that is legible, that's all we really need. Now you'll see that once the first rendering is done, it automatically moves on to the next rendering. So the first render was set to be done at 9am in the morning. And the second one is one hour later, 60 minutes later, which is at 8am, I mean 10am. I'll speed up the process. I'll see you guys on the other side. All right, rendering has finished and we have all the files. Now, what's kind of cool is that you get this little HTML file, which is like a quick animation of your sun study. Uh, my rendering is totally blown out, so you can't see anything, but if you adjust the exposure, then you'll be able to see a nice animation of it. All right. so. With all these files, what we're going to do is we're going to have to run them through Photoshop. But before we get to it, sometimes you have a lot of images and sometimes they can get jumbled up like this. One cool trick I have is adjust the window in such a way that it has a multiple of the number of elements that you have added so that you can select them with a single drag at a time. And we'll just delete these. So what we have are these shadow layers that are incrementally saved and studied. And the issue with these is that they're first off inverted. We want the white part to be black. And also we need to adjust it in such a way that it's more usable in the future. So we'll do that by going opening up Photoshop. And then drag all the files in. Alright, so with the first one, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create an action, which is to create a folder called custom actions and create an action. Um, shadow study. Okay. So what Photoshop Action does is it records a set of adjustments that you make to this image. And once you save it, you can like play it with another image. So it saves you a lot of repetitive work. If you can't see this Action tab, you can go to Windows, go down to Action, or press Alt F9. All right, so first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to open Invert which inverts the black and white. And then I'll also add threshold, which is right here. Now the threshold right now is right in the middle, which is not ideal because it turns out our black lens right there. So we'll shift it over just a little bit so that we capture all the gray area, just like that. And then we'll select all these layers and then press Control E or merge layers. Once that's done, I'll hit File, Save, Control S. Quality looks good, and then I'll close out of that. Now, what's kind of cool is that actions also record save and close actions. So once you stop recording action, and then go back all the way to the top and play it, It'll apply, make all these changes, and then even save the file and close it out so you can move on to the next one. Check this out. Da -da -da. The next one, next one, next one. So all you really have to do is press the play button, and now you just processed nine images. And you can do this with like 20 or 100 images, which helps a lot when you're doing extensive solar studies. Now we'll go back to our folder. And let's make sure to see that all the images are processed properly. And that looks perfect. Now, we'll go back to Rhino and render a base image. A base image will have no shadows. It's only the ambient occlusion. So what we're going to do is take this image and composite it in InDesign. 
I don't recommend doing this all the time, but when you are just creating, producing one image, you can use the settings that are given to you in V-Ray. Issue with this is that once you have it sent to another person or once you reset your V-Ray, the settings are lost. So it's less than ideal to use these, but sometimes you need just, just need that speed. Just gonna make a quick adjustment to make sure that the white, the brightest part is perfectly white. And we have this nice subtle shadow to outline the buildings. I'll go ahead and save this top image. I'll call it base. Another thing you could do is to use material override and choose a V-Ray tune material. Then it'll automatically give you outlines around it. Outlines around the geometry. The only downside though is that you won't be able to adjust the thickness of the line afterwards. So you set it at your own discretion, but when you just want speed and you don't have to worry about the flexibility, and I think this is the way to go. All right, we'll choose a tune material as our override, and then we'll try rendering this. All right, renderer is just finished, and this looks great. So I'll go ahead and save this base file. I'll name it as base outline. Now what we're gonna do next is we're gonna lay it out in InDesign so that it's nice to see. Switch over to InDesign, we'll create a new document. Use a format that your team is using or that your print paper takes. I'll be choosing tabloid, the landscape format, without facing pages. Say OK. Now, now that we're in InDesign, I'm going to hit Ctrl D. And I'll be pasting in our base file. Copy this path. Open up. And I'll paste that right in there. So I'm going to be copying this file over nine times because our study is between 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. And it doesn't matter if they are not entirely in line just yet because we can adjust it all at the end. So I'll do that. Make sure this is in the center. Excellent. All right, now what we're going to do is we're going to hit Control C and then paste it in place. And before you click away, I'm going to click New Layer and move these over to another layer and then lock our base layer. So I'll call this Background and this will be Shadow. Now what we're going to do is we're going to take a white arrow tool and then click in the center of the image to select the source and we'll delete it so that we can see the background behind. Once we have done that to all nine, we can still see the background layer behind but now we have nine blank spaces where we can place our shadow studies on. So I'm going to select all our shadow studies, drag it over to InDesign. Now I'll click once on each box and you'll see that images are perfectly aligned. There we go. Now I'll select all images and reduce the opacity to 10%. Voila, and there we go. You can see how the base file blends in with the shadows that we have just created. And they look great because they're aligned perfectly. And this whole press was, process was streamlined in such a way that this can be scaled and the amount of work that you do won't increase as much. 
Now feel free to create new layers to add in more annotations. Thank you for tuning in today. Archihax is all about streamlining your workflow so that you can spend less time producing and more time designing. Feel free to leave any questions in the comments and subscribe for future hacks. I'll see you guys next time.